Bienvenue tous. Welcome to reporters here on France 24. And let me introduce you to this week's reporter, Cyril Payen. Cyril, great to see you. My pleasure. Cyril is just back from Laos, where he's been to basically, and you will see in his film, a shocking no man's land. It's an area that's been completely devastated uh, by the collapse of a hydroelectric dam. Um, Cyril, tell us about how difficult it was, first of all, to get in to this area. And then, of course, the conditions of filming it must have been, I imagine, fairly atrocious. This is the, the, the big contradiction, quite a paradox between Laos, which is uh, known by millions of tourists, and there is a reality. It's still very much a, a socialist republic, and there are some topics which, is, which are very, very difficult to, to address. The dam problem, the, the way the government makes billions of dollars out of this damming in Laos is one of these topics, and especially the tragedy which happened uh, nearly one year ago in, the, in southern Laos, in a very remote place where we decided to, to come back. We had to do it clandestine because there is no journalist visa for this place and journalists or witnesses of any kind are not welcome here. So a remote place, secret filming, big difficulties and a story that is really worth telling. Cyril, thank you very much indeed. Let's take a look now at Cyril's film. Dreaming of a hydroelectric power bonanza, the poor landlocked Southeast Asian country of Laos eyed development and prosperity through its river network. However, decisions by the Laotian government have instead created an unprecedented environmental disaster threatening tens of millions of people. A huge wave of mud engulfed six villages on the evening of the 23rd of July, 2018, after the collapse of the Atapur hydroelectric dam. To find out more about what happened, we visited the region not far from the Vietnamese and Cambodian borders. We did so incognito as the Laotian government bans any mention of the disaster. Our investigation begins in Bangkok, the Thai capital. We have an appointment with Joseph, an environmental activist who fled his homeland of Laos a few months ago. The government did not like me publishing information about the dams one bit. I went to the region immediately after the Atapeo disaster. It was terrible. There were hundreds of victims. People were missing. Everyone who survived did so in extremely difficult conditions. There was no communication and very little help. I posted this information online and the secret police came looking for me. Joseph hid in the jungle for several months and eventually had no choice but to seek exile in Thailand. He says the Laotian authorities are hiding the truth about the scale of the disaster. The region is virtually cut off from the rest of the world. The government doesn't want witnesses. But worse than that, Laos continues to sell all of its natural resources to foreign companies. There are dams everywhere. People are being displaced. Mekong means mother of waters. It is one of the world's longest rivers, starting out on the roof of the world in the Himalayas before arriving at the South China Sea thousands of kilometers away. The vast river basin is vital to life in several countries of Southeast Asia. Laos's dam projects are now putting that in question. The country is a Marxist-Leninist one-party republic. Behind the tourist postcard image, the regime in power lacks transparency and censors information. We visited the south of the country to witness the aftermath of the Atapur Dam disaster, thanks to a secret network of environmental activists Joseph set up. We met this man on a remote trail. He's our first contact in the region. You know, it's really difficult to get information. No one dares speak. After the dam broke, the government did send some help, but then nothing happened in the valley. We have lived here for over a thousand years and never had such a disaster. We headed further south towards the Bolivan Plateau, avoiding the main roads to learn more. Here, there are no more villages or locals. The whole region seems to be devoted to dam projects, dozens of them. This environmental sanctuary has been transformed into a giant open-air construction site, like a state within a state where foreign companies, mainly Chinese ones, rule. After a day's drive, 
we finally get to the area where the dam collapsed in July 2018. We discover a ruined, macabre, devastated landscape. It's as if a tsunami hit this part of Laos. Six villages drowned under a five billion cubic meter flood of muddy water. They are ghost villages. Almost nothing has changed since the disaster. In the hamlet of Ban Mai, however, one family has just returned. While survivors are still in makeshift camps, Buala Fan decided to defy the ban on returning. I lost everything. The flood took it all. I lost everything except my life, my rice paddy, my money, everything was taken away. We barely have enough to eat. How can I look after my children? A sign in the camp says it's temporary, but it said that for months. I couldn't wait any longer. I couldn't stand doing nothing anymore. It's like we've all been forgotten. At least here in Ban Mai, we can say we are back home, even though it's very difficult, you know, to come back to a completely empty village where so many people have died. There were heavy monsoon rains on the evening of the 23rd of July, 2018, but nothing that would explain the rupture of the dam built upstream. Though alerted by the South Korean company that built the dam just a few hours before the disaster, the local authorities did not notify the population in time. Look, the water reached this point, and it was still at this level on the third day. Can you imagine? Many people drowned, and especially Many people went missing. That's the worst. We just don't know. Our neighbors right over there, a family of six, are all dead. I'm terrified. I'm not. But I want just one thing, and that's to bring down all those dams. I'm ready. When is this kind of thing going to happen again? Everyone knows in Atapu and all over Laos that other dams will collapse. That's for sure. The valley's landscape was turned on its head. Mud covered the rice paddies. Farmers became fishermen. The fish here arrived in the wave of mud. The land is ruined. We don't plant anything anymore. Nothing can grow here. I don't know if I'll ever be able to plow my field again. We would like the state to help us a little anyway, just to survive, to feed our children. <laughs> that dam up there was a curse. There's death, poverty, hunger all around us. We have no roof, no rice, no future. What have we done to have such bad luck? Bad luck or government error, the official death toll for the disaster stopped at 29 dead and 1,000 people missing. <laughs> it is 6 o'clock in the morning in the nearby village of Ban in Lat. Vong has been a real fisherman for 50 years. You go this way. Watch out on the left. It's dangerous now. Our river has completely changed. We didn't have all these little islands there before the dam broke. There are dead tree trunks everywhere now. Vong knows the Seinam Noi River well. We are upstream on the tributary of the Mekong where the dam was built. This is where the deadly flow of mud came from. left the government camp. He returns to his fishing grounds each day, but his heart is not in it. Something has changed. The dams had already begun to kill our business even before the disaster. To kill us. There are no more fish. There's nothing left. We can see what's going on. We allow foreign companies to do business and do anything to our rivers and forests. They build and they build without any government control and they also dump toxic products dangerous to water. It's poison and it's coming our way. The people in this region know that Chinese companies are setting up shop. They don't care about anything. 
The authorities don't do anything, they get the money and that's it. And we, the people, stand here, helpless. There'll be nothing to grow and nothing left to fish in the rivers for the next generations. It's over. Instead, there'll be only foreign investors. The government talks to us all day about preserving the environment, but in reality, the opposite happens everywhere. Yes, he's right. Our children one day won't even know what a flower or a tree is. After the disaster, the Laotian authorities promised to suspend construction projects. But two dams have been built on this one river. More than 100 dams will be built on the Mekong and its tributaries by 2020. The next generations in Laos face a degradation of ecosystems, displacement of populations and the collapse of poorly designed dams. For the first time since July 2018, Wala Fan returns further upstream to the villages that were hit first. When I think that there was a village here with dozens of families, shops, it was the most prosperous place in the area. They harvested two rice crops a year. It was a good village. Hey, are there people on that side? No, no one. It's difficult to look at. How do you manage to cope? There's no rice, no fish. We don't have anything. Nothing. Is Sun there? He's my friend. I haven't seen him here. I knew it. Frankly, I'm ready. Everyone here is well aware that this is going to happen again. Me and my family have put aside cans to float just in case. We have a canoe. We're ready for anything. Before, the problem was that we had never experienced this. We weren't told. That's why there were so many victims. Two whole villages removed from the map. Here, two Buddhist temples have survived. There are officially 7,000 refugees housed in makeshift camps. The authorities have ordered people to wait and not return. But anger is mounting among the victims. The state doesn't do anything. We've never seen such a disaster, not even during the war. We live like beggars. We survive on what people give us. What have we done to deserve this? Because of a dam? I'm an army veteran and I feel abandoned. My wife is seriously ill because of the poor quality of the rice. We're dying. We can see right now that some families are coming back to the destroyed villages just like we did. They have no choice. They're returning because they have no other solution. We were among the first to defy the ban. Other families will follow. We need help rebuilding our homes. Please, you have to help us. The resilience of the local people is linked to their Buddhist beliefs. In Ban Mai, in the midst of chaos, they see miracles. And the miracle here is life. Huala Fan is celebrating the arrival of his first granddaughter. She was born at home, like him and his forebears. We're going to stay here now. No more going anywhere. If they want to come and get us, no problem. Come, we're waiting for you. At least we'll see someone from the government. We've done nothing wrong. We won't move. I want her to be able to study and work. We don't have much to offer her apart from life. The government is asking us to wait for four or five years, but that's impossible. I won't wait until my daughter is five years old for my life to improve. The rivers of Southeast Asia, as elsewhere, are an ancient source of life. But they can become a nightmare for the hundreds of millions of people who depend on them in one of the world's poorest countries. Here in the studio, you can see the scene of devastation where Cyril Payan was filming, showing the extent of the damage done by the collapse of this hydroelectric dam. A hydroelectric dam producing electricity cereal, which went where? Outside of Laos. This is Seriously? The, this is the contradiction, the paradox of this damning problem, this massive ecological tragedy and problem in Laos. Nearly 90%, sometimes more in some kind of construction project of dams, are for neighboring countries uh, out of Laos, namely Thailand, but, but for nearly 80% uh, now of the new projects 
China, the ogre China, which has an immense uh, 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 desire of, uh, of electricity. And most of these uh, dams are also operated, built by Chinese companies. So it, it kind of seems to add rub salt in the wounds in, in many ways, given that the people who've been affected by this benefit in no possible way. And I'm wondering whether the, the government in Laos has, has changed its policy regarding all this in the wake of this disaster. This is something which uh, have been, uh, would have been expected in other countries, in other regime. After there is, there were an official announcement by the, the central government in Vientiane in Laos just after the tragedy, saying there will be a freeze of all new projects. The thing is, when we have been in this uh, remote uh, uh, southern part of Laos, on the border of Cambodia and uh, and Laos, we could see more, more, more damming, and there will be 100 dams by two, uh, 2020 100. for just Laos. This is. Uh, totally craziness. And some Chinese, as we say, Chinese companies, buildings and buildings in the total with lack of transparency in the, in the process. So it is extremely scary for the ecological problem in Laos, but also for the human cost. Indeed, the human cost. Let's talk about that because what we can see in the images behind you is the, the way that things have been just swept away. And the people who have very little, had what little they had, washed away, destroyed. And I, I think the answer to this question is going to be no. I'm wondering, is there any compensation to these people? Are they getting any help? This is the morality, perhaps, of this film. Is uh, does the the life of a, um, um, a farmer from southern Laos, the remote places in this poor country, uh, is life uh, worth less than uh, the life of somebody in another continent or in another countries? But now there is no whatsoever any kinds of uh, uh, strong compensations driven to them. When we get there, there are still uh, thousands of so-called internal refugees with nothing, no money, no food, and there is still a denial of responsibility between the, the foreign, which is South Korean operator, builder of the dam, and the, the Lao government. And in the between, you have these uh, people who are just uh, lost in their tragedy. And that is absolutely disgraceful. Cyril, it's a powerful film. Thank you very much for, for, for your time, for, for making it happen, and for telling a story that needs to be told. And that's very much what this program is about. Cyril, thank you very much thank indeed. You. you can see this again, of course, via our website, wwwfrance 24 Com. This is Reporters here on France 24. Stay with us.